Let's get started. I'm Randy Wong. Uh, I'm a retina specialist located in Fairfax, Virginia. I have a website that most of you are familiar with, and it's called retinaeyedoctor.com. I started the website <clears throat> as kind of a challenge from Amy, my wife, about four or five years ago. And it has really reached out to really my virtual audience, including you. Many of you have found me through um, your searches on the internet, and we've communicated. Um, most of us have communicated via uh, comments or remarks placed on the blog. And it has really become, it has really taught me how powerful a tool this can be. The idea of talking about floaters uh, tonight is that it is very far-reaching. Most patients uh, experience floaters at some point in their life. And so I thought this would be a perfect topic for a forum uh, where you, the patients, or my readers could interact with me. So let's get going. Um, floaters, evaluation, and treatment. I'd like to briefly define floaters. I'd like to discuss their causes tonight. Germane to many of you is what to do about persistent or chronic floaters. Just like cataracts, they can decrease your vision, although not in the same way. We'll discuss treatment options and talk about vitrectomy, which in my mind is really the only true therapeutic option. And lastly, we'll have a Q&A session after this short presentation. Floaters in my mind are anything in your vision that moves to and fro with eye movement. And that means that if you move your eyes left and right, that whatever you're seeing, whatever opacifications or black spots or fleas or cobwebs, they move with a certain lag time in coordination with your eye movement. It doesn't matter to me what color they are. It doesn't matter if they're dark. It doesn't matter if they're transparent. It does not matter what size, and it certainly doesn't matter what shape. As long as they move with to and fro with eye movement, they're generically called floaters. Because we're talking about things that are decreasing your vision or things that you can see that are suspended in your vitreous, which is the gel inside your eye. This is a uh, nice image uh, picture of floaters. The floaters are these white opacifications which are filling the vitreous in, the, in this um, image located in the vitreous body or the vitreous of the eye. And it fills most of the eye. Just as air fills a basketball, the vitreous is a water or proteinaceous gel that fills the inside of the eye. And this is an extreme example of very large, dense, dense floaters, which would cast shadows. And you actually see the float shadows here on the retina. And certainly in this artist's rendition, I bet you it's really decreasing the vision. There's lots of causes of floaters. The most common is a posterior vitreous detachment, something we call a PVD. When a PVD occurs, there can be some changes in the way light is refracted or uh, shifted uh, within the eye itself, making certain parts of the vitreous more noticeable. I don't really understand what vitreous opacification is, except that it is some physical property where the light or the the ability to transmit light of the vitreous changes so that parts of the vitreous are more obvious uh, than it used to be. So that's why I said that the optical properties of the vitreous change. You can see cloudy, hazy, vitreous floaters just as I can. One of the other causes of floaters that is uncommon but is inflammation in the eye, something called uveitis. And in this case, the floaters would be comprised of lots and lots of white cells or inflammatory cells that have migrated to the vitreous and they clump up and they cause floaters. The eye, uh, or the, when the eye has inflammation, it's not unlike a knee joint swelling due to arthritis. You can think of inflammation inside the eye as 
arthritis in the eye. And this attracts a lot of inflammation, which causes white cells to migrate inside the eye. And that's what causes the clumps or floaters that you see. The most dreaded cause of floaters would be related to a retinal tear. You could have blood that causes floaters. You could have cells from underneath the retina causing the floaters. So that the usual recommendation for new floaters is going to be to get examined to exclude the possibility of a retinal tear. Some causes or many causes of floaters are benign. But I have to tell you tonight, and I'll emphasize this again, that new floaters need to be examined to exclude the possibility of a retinal tear, which could cause retinal detachment. And that's a blinding condition. I understand that's not really why we're here tonight, but I need to tell you this. Other causes of new floaters uh, include diabetes. There are certain stages of diabetic retinopathy, which could cause bleeding. And you can imagine if blood is liberated into the vitreous, then that could cause floaters as well. Here are some pictures to show other or causes of floaters related to bleeding. There's a stage of diabetic retinopathy where abnormal blood vessels are, are growing on the surface of the retina. And these abnormal blood vessels are very friable or they're very fragile. Um, they can spontaneously bleed, causing blood to accumulate in the vitreous. And you can see how that could cause floaters. So that we need to make sure in the long run that any new floaters are not a sign of any systemic disease, such as diabetes. Here is an image where there's been lots of bleeding in the vitreous due to these friable or fragile cells on the surface of the retina. And you can see how we've got large clumps of blood causing gigantic floaters. The treatment for this specific case is much different than say floaters that are just bothering your vision but not related to disease. The most common is a posterior vitreous detachment and you can see that the vitreous is somewhat separated from the back half of the retina here. A posterior vitreous detachment is a normal event and happens to everybody with age or with time. And often when this occurs, floaters develop for the reasons that we talked to, we addressed before. So the advice I give and I must give for anyone that has experiences new floaters is that you need to get an examination. You need to get a dilated eye exam to make sure that your retina is healthy and that you are not at risk for a retinal tear or a retinal detachment because that can be a potentially blinding condition. And again, I realize most of us are here because we're going to be talking about chronic floaters, but I have to do my due diligence to warn you that, you know, there are some grave consequences if we assume that all floaters are benign in terms of threat to vision loss. So what I'm urging everyone that experiences new floaters is they have to get examined to ensure that there is no disease that can be treated to prevent permanent vision loss. And that's my disclaimer, disclaimer for the evening. I think germane to many of us here tonight is what the heck do you do with chronic floaters? What do you do with floaters that are persistent and they simply just do not go away? In many of you, they're actually decreasing your vision. They can cause glare. They're annoying because of the copious little black spots that obscure uh, your vision. And I understand that. And I think that's why most of you are here. What's curious to me is that while floaters can decrease your vision, there's something that's a little bit more common and a little bit more accepted in terms of a medical reason for decreased vision. Lots of people have cataracts. Cataracts happen to everybody. They cause progressive decrease in vision. They can cause glare. And they cause the patient not to be able to see as well as they'd like. Not too dissimilar from patients suffering from chronic floaters. Decreased vision, spots in your vision that can cause glare. You may not be seeing as well as you'd like. What's been apparent to me over the last several years is if you were diagnosed with cataract surgery, that the same doctor that would tell you that they'd be happy to remove your cataract so you could see better 
actually ignore your complaints if you got floaters, although you've got the same disease. And what I'm going to explain later on is the cure is actually safer or as safe as cataract surgery. It's very, very curious to me. Right now, the treatment of floaters includes observation, and that's the medical way of saying we're not going to do anything. There are some people that advocate for laser treatment for floaters, and there are other people that are willing to advocate, like myself, that a vitrectomy might be the real appropriate therapy to treat or remove floaters. As I said, observation is the fancy way to say do nothing. The hope is that you may or may not adapt to the floaters. And as many of you know, this just hasn't happened to you. In my opinion, you've got several weeks to a couple of months to, to get used to the floaters. And if they're getting worse or they still bother you after a couple months, then I, I believe you legitimately have a problem that you're concerned about. If you adapt to the floaters, great. You've, you, you've adapted, there's nothing else to do. You can tolerate them, and that happens often. But if you don't adapt, and most of you here tonight are people that have not adapted, or you've realized that the floaters are not going away as promised, you become frustrated because I understand that many of you have been discounted because you're either crazy or you don't really have a problem. People offer you laser or most recently, there's the possibility of having a vitrectomy. There are a few people that across the United States that recommend YAG laser as a popular treatment option to cure floaters. They're offered by very, very few people. And they And I am aware of the fact that not all floaters can be treated with this laser. The laser is a very common device or instrument in almost every ophthalmologist's office. It's used for other means. It's a cutting laser, and the intent is to take the floaters and to break, up, break them up into smaller pieces within the vitreous so that they become less noticeable. But there's no guarantee. Um, only certain floaters can be treated with this technology. Floaters that can... Floaters that can be seen by the doctor can be treated, but floaters too close to the retina can't be treated. And what's really amazing to me is that we don't know what the risks are because the very few people that um, perform this procedure won't release any side effects or complications of the razor, laser. I do know that the people that offer this laser are not retina specialists. Myself included, I do not recommend a laser. I think it's dangerous. However, I think vitrectomy surgery or FOV is a very legitimate cure or therapy for most people that uh, suffer from chronic um, floaters. FOV, which I believe to understand is uh, floater-only vitrectomy, in my world is just a simple vitrectomy. There's nothing special about a vitrectomy versus FO, FOV. Te uh, technically, it's the same operation. What we're doing with the operation is removing the vitreous. We're moving the vit we are removing the vitreous gel where, where the floaters actually uh, are, for lack of a better term, living. It does not require actual visualization by me because I know I can remove the vitreous. We've also established by the time we're considering surgery that whatever's plaguing you is moving to and fro. The